In my previous video, I talked about the why and the how of separation of concerns. But to really bring it to life, I want to take the time in this video to show you in a React code base what it could look like when you apply separation of concerns in three different examples. Let's open VS Code. Actually, let's start with the browser. You can see my to-do app. I've shown this before. Uh, you can mark them as done. You can delete them. You can add new items. This is the one I've used in my video on test-driven development. Let's use it again. Um, from a separation of concerns perspective, I have split the components into a, their own folders and the add to-do is its own component and the to-do list is its own component. So if you look at my index entry point, I have an app component. That app component has the access to the other component. So it lists the to-do uh, uh, items via the to-do list and it has a add to do component. This add to do component is what we'll zoom into for now. See what the separation of concerns is here. In my other video on separation of concerns, I've already said like the first thing of separation of concerns we learned as front end developers is the fact that we shouldn't split HTML, CSS and JavaScript as three different concerns. That is a wrong way of slicing the cake, so to say. So what we now do instead is we have our HTML, CSS and JavaScript together in one folder per component. So we slice it differently. We create different components and we bundle the different technologies together because it makes more sense to have the CSS for the add to do component together with the CSS for the, add, the, the JavaScript and the HTML for the add to do component, just as with the to do list. So I have a folder in here and you can see the CSS and the, and the JS are together. Now, in React, it's common to have the HTML together with the JavaScript code that belongs with it. So in this case, there's DOM handling, uh, event handling. So that makes sort of sense. Um, but there is already another separation of concerns here. If you want to actually add an item via this add to-do list to the sort of data store of to-dos, it is calling the dispatch function. The dispatch function is injected as a prop. So it's also a separate concern that is located somewhere else. In this case, we're using a reducer to do these kind of add, remove, toggle actions. That is the stuff that can happen to the data. But that is again via a reducer located somewhere else. Now, reducer isn't the best way or the only way of doing this necessarily, but it is a way of doing this. And right now the data is handled as a separate concern somewhere else. And if you look at the add to do item, uh, the component itself, it is dispatching. So you can see when it, the separate concern is being called, but it's located somewhere else. So this component is purely busy with rendering the HTML and then sending off an event to somewhere else and located together with the component is the CSS. So there's no split by language, there's split by concern. The second example is atomic design. Say you work in a company, a software as a service company, where you have one team responsible for a React component library and a few other, maybe three other teams that are working on different parts of the application, the software as a service that you are delivering, the app you are building. That component library will grow bigger over time and its use is that everybody is using the thing and not building their own thing. So if you have a button or, or some other uh, a drop down or maybe a part of the sidebar or your colors in, in that are your design language as, as your company. You don't want these teams inventing these things themselves. Yes, they can build it themselves if they have a design guide, but why not reuse actual React components here? So this on itself is already a separation of concerns. They can focus on the app. The framework is supplied by another team. Atomic design is a specific way of structuring your components. Let's look at the original website. Atomic design was, uh, I think, conceived by Brad Frost in, in 2013. This is the original blog post. It's basically about how you make your components. And he came up with a system of atoms, molecules, and organisms, and templates and pages. I will focus less on these in the context of separation of concerns. Now, 
fair warning, atomic design is about more than separation of concerns. It is, as a side effect, has separation of concerns in your code base. But its goal is to have a system to reason about, how to split up reuse functionality and be able to discuss it with your product owner, your UX designer, maybe even your clients and other developers. That is the part that is valuable at, about atomic design that I will not discuss here because this video is about separation of concerns. So let's look at it. Atoms are the smallest forms of components. Atoms can be used to build molecules and molecules and atoms can be used to build organisms. And that in turn can yield to pages and, and templates. So let's look at an example. Um, in here you have three different atoms. You have a label, an input, and a button. So you can conceive of these atoms being used all across your application or your website or whatever thing you're building. So using these as sort of the thing that can't be divided further, the, the smallest possible thing, reusing it is a good idea because the moment you do that is also guaranteeing you this will be from a, a design perspective, will always be consistent design language from a code perspective. If this is not simply a field that you can enter text into, but actually contains an email validator because the input is about email, then you need this way of validating emails. You don't want all these teams to come up with their own email validator. So this, this might look small, but it can still consist of considerable logic and implementation time that you want to be consistent. You want to have in one place. You want it as a separate concern. Atoms can be used to build molecules. Molecules are slightly bigger. So in here you see a combination of three atoms, um, which consist of this, um, this search uh, uh, molecule, so to say. And further along, you can come up with organisms and organisms are the larger building blocks. You can think of a header, which contains this search molecule, but it contains more. It also contains a menu, a logo and, and whatnot. And there's many of these things you can conceive of. There's many examples of headers that throughout all the different pages that you have on your website, these headers are always the same. So if you have multiple teams working on them, yes, nowadays you have micro frontends technologies and whatnot, you still want to have them in one place. There's also the templates, which you can use to create pages with and whatnot. But I think from a um, separation of concerns perspective, they're not terribly interesting. Again, Atomic design is about more than separation of concerns, but it's definitely something we can use this way. If we look at our HTML, CSS and JavaScript in one folder per component, these are the things that you, if you combine that stuff together and you also add logic like this email validator or whatever to it, you have this one bundle of a concern that can be reused as a whole thing. Yes, it contains three different languages, but that doesn't matter. That's not the thing that's relevant here. And for example, number three, let's look at a subscribe to newsletter component that I've built as an example. It's a fairly simple component. We have a label, we have an input and we have a subscribe button. You can enter your email address here and it will validate it for you. Right now it's red. If I enter an email address, that's okay. It will turn green. I can subscribe to this and it will say thank you. That's really all there is to it. So I'm not actually saving this to a database, but you could conceive of me doing that. But Let's look at the implementation here. I have a component uh, in my app.js. There's really nothing there. It's just the subscribe to newsletter component. I have a React component here that implements that part. My email validator is somewhere else. I've already, during my implementation, come up with the idea of, okay, let's do email validation, not in this component. It's good to keep that sort of separate. Um, because this might be a generic thing that I might want to reuse somewhere else. Maybe this code is uh, could be in a library that I could also use on, on the backend, on the Node.js site, for example. So this component has some state. We need to figure out whether user has already subscribed, whether the email is valid, whether the form field has been touched, so we don't show you have an error before the user has even touched the form field. Um, then we have some some form validation handling code. So if it's actually valid, what happens when the user uh, submits the form and um, we want to trigger the validation when the email address, when the, the form field itself has changed. Um, if the user has su subscribed, we can render a paragraph here. 
We figure out this, the classes, the CSSs in here as well. There's some CSS in the same folder that shows uh, this is the styling we're using. Of course, it's just an example, but that you have a, an idea about it. Then we have the HTML itself. There's a form. You can see there's two different form rows, one with the label and the input, the email field itself, one with the submit button. There's two events, the on submit, if the form is submitted by the user pressing enter on the input or by clicking uh, the, the button uh, to submit, then this will be triggered. And whenever the input field changes, we have an on change event. So if you look at this file, for me, there's two different concerns happening. You have form validation code and you have rendering the form itself. Um, I would like to split these out because these things are for me separate concerns. They This doesn't read very nicely. Yes, I, I could fold them closely and have a better idea of what this is actually doing, but it's still not a very, um, it's still not two concerns, that there's still two concerns here that, that don't mix really together nicely for me. So let's refactor this a bit. I'd like to take this code and get it out of this file. Basically uh, see if I can move it onto a hook the way um, this is usually done in react nowadays is just creating a separate hook i call this hook the use form hook uh, export default function use form so let's put this over here um, then I'll need to return whatever is missing over here. So let's use this. I'll figure this out. I probably need to give it the, the ref because I guess the email ref is used over here. So let's give that as an argument. And these things are not used in this file, uh, but has subscribed and emails touched and emails that that is the stuff that is used in another file so i need to i'll need to return that has subscribed emails valid emails touched and the functions will need to be exported as well so let's first start with this now of course if we look at the output we have the use form on submit on change. Yeah, the use form we need to import. Import, I did default, right? I did default. Use form from use form. And the email needs to be moved to here because we call the is valid email in this file. On submit is not being used here. On change is not being used here. So these I'll need to import here as well. And I guess we're getting closer already. So it's still use state. Yeah, I need to import use state from React. Nope. Import use state from React. And new state is over here, not used, but defined. My tests are working again. So this is already one way of refactoring this logic out. I now have a relatively clean subscribe to newsletter component that is using my use form hook, uh, which contains logic that is somewhere else. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I could now start to reuse if I have multiple forms on my website. Uh, it's not a crazy idea to think of on change, on submit or is valid logic to be more generic. If you would have, uh, instead of your email ref here, you would have a more descriptive uh, uh, or more declarative way of inputting these are the fields I want you to validate and that is all the use form needs, then it would be, it would be able to handle that kind of stuff. The use form is also on itself more of a pure function now, so it is also easily more easily testable. That is also a big advantage of separating these two concerns out, because every time you would run 
tests on this um, on this component, you would be dealing with the HTML. You would be indirectly testing this stuff, which can have value in the form of an integration test. But this this logic can now be tested more purely. Good separation of concerns is about decomposition, taking a big problem and splitting it up into many small problems, different concerns, different things. And good separation of concerns is about finding the concerns, the, the, the things that have as little overlap with each other as possible. All these different things should consist of more details that conceptually belong together. That's the cohesion part. If you have a class with some code, multiple functions maybe, they should belong together. Like the form validation code that is split off. There's many event and validation uh, functions in there that's really something different from showing what a form looks like together with the HTML and the CSS that's, that's rendering visually some stuff. And the other one is handling events and validating stuff that all belongs in the same folder because from a larger perspective it's all doing the form stuff that's a concern this component is a concern as well but if you zoom in you have two different more smaller concerns you have the displaying and you have the handling and the event-based stuff because these two have no overlap and that's what defines a good concern in this specific case i've shown three examples in this video of what good separation of concerns could look like in a react code base i hope this was helpful if you have any thoughts or if you have a request for a future video, leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.